I'm down on the floor today to speak to the debate that's happening now on reconciliation, specifically uh, the fact that we are here for the 16th time in the United States Senate debating uh, the repeal of all or significant parts of the Affordable Care Act. You tack that on top of the 50 to 60 times that this has been debated, the repeal of all or major parts of the Affordable Care Act in the House of Representatives. And as many of us have said over and over that we think the debate over repeal is over and that we should A, accept the success of the Affordable Care Act and B, to the extent that there need to be changes made, do it on a bipartisan basis. Find the ways that we can work together to try to perfect a law that is by and large working. Um, and the data really only tells one story. And um, I, I, I wanna just review it for a moment because if you hear many of my Republican colleagues talk, um, they act in the absence uh, and in the denial of the overwhelming evidence that tell you that the Affordable Care Act is working. There are 17 million Americans who have insurance today who didn't have it before the Affordable Care Act. They've gotten it either through these exchanges, these private health care exchanges, with a tax credit from the federal government, or they've gotten it through Medicaid expansion. We've reduced the number of people without health care insurance in this country by 30 percent just in the first few years of implementation. And that's with many states doing everything that they can to undermine the act. That's with many states refusing to accept, for instance, the expansion of Medicaid coverage that could make that number even greater than 17 million or 30%. In my state, where we've been aggressively trying to implement the Affordable Care Act, we've actually reduced the number of people without insurance by 50% in Connecticut. Uh, the total numbers in Connecticut uh, are pretty extraordinary, given the short amount of time that we've had and given the fact that in Connecticut we had a pretty robust Medicaid program to begin with. Overall costs to the federal government um, are under control for the first time in many of our lifetimes. The average medical rate of inflation to the federal government is about 2 or 3 percent. The overall rate of medical inflation is the lowest since 1960. That's because the Affordable Care Act is transitioning payments away from volume-based payments, rewarding you for the more medicine you practice, to outcomes-based payments, rewarding you for keeping your patients healthy. Uh, and quality's getting better. You look at a broad array of metrics, uh, things like hospital readmission rates or hospital-inquired infections that are all going down. Um, but let's be clear, the Affordable Care Act was not designed to fix every single problem in the healthcare system. There are still going to be problems. There are still going to be uh, anecdotal failures. Um, but if you're working to undermine the act in your state, you are going to have more problems with your healthcare system. And so when I hear my colleagues come down to the floor of the Senate and complain about hospitals closing in their state, when their state is actively rejecting federal money that would help expand Medicaid and provide more people walking into hospitals with reimbursement attached to them, there is more than a hint of irony to that complaint. If you want your health care system to work, then implement the Affordable Care Act. Um, Mr. President, Senator Johnson is offering an amendment which could be of particular harm to the people in my state and in neighboring states. His amendment would uh, allow for uh, plans that don't comport with the minimum coverage requirements of the Affordable Care Act to continue to be offered. And I want to just speak for a moment before I relinquish the floor about this particular amendment. Um, there's a, a little boy that I've talked about on the floor a couple times before by the name of Kyle uh, from Simsbury, Connecticut. Kyle um, uh, requires for the treatment of a blood disorder um, injections um, that cost about $3,000 per dose, and he has to take them three to four times a week. Um, because his previous insurance plan had an annual and lifetime limit, his treatment threatened to bankrupt his family. Uh, that fear 
is no longer a reality for his family because the Affordable Care Act says that if you want to offer an insurance plan in this country, it's got to be a fair plan. It can't have annual limits. It can't have lifetime limits. It can't charge you more because you're a woman. Um, it has to cover basic medical necessities like maternity coverage. Um, those requirements that insurance plans really provide actual insurance for people and don't discriminate against you based on your medical history or based on your gender, um, that not only has uh, allowed people to have access to health care that they didn't have before, but it's given millions of families like Kyle's family peace of mind. The Johnson Amendment would take that peace of mind away from millions of families by allowing for plans to go back on the market throughout the country that would cap coverage on an annual basis or on a lifetime basis that could discriminate once again against you based on your gender or your medical history. Um, there might be a lot of parts of the Affordable Care Act that people support or don't support, but the one thing that generally people of all parties have supported is the idea that we should put patients and consumers back in charge of their health care instead of the old days when the insurance companies were in charge when the insurance companies could tell you that you had insurance, but then halfway through the year, just because you used, used a lot of it, yank it away from you. Um, there are a number of reasons why we should reject this specific amendment, but on behalf of the millions of families like Kyle's out there who don't want to go back to a world in which their insurance companies could take away their coverage just because they needed it more than other families, um, that those families alone, their stories alone, uh, are uh, example enough to reject this amendment. So um, I hope that we can move on from this debate to try to work together, Republicans and Democrats, to perfect the Affordable Care Act, that we can get beyond this perpetual, ongoing, never-ending debate uh, about repeal, and specifically with respect to the Johnson Amendment. Let's think about all those families. Uh, who have been jerked around by insurance companies for far too long, uh, who need some relief, relief that the Affordable Care Act has given them. I yield the floor.